Hello, third grade. Today is May 1st. The lesson for May 1st, which is Phyllis Wheatley, part two, will cover pages 247 to 251. Before we get started, I want you to make sure you get this worksheet, this graphic organizer, wherever you have it and have that ready during this time. And so you can pause the video and go get that. And now I'm going to go ahead and put up the vocabulary. I want you to go ahead and pause the video and read these sentences silently and then come back on for us to review them. All right, good job. Number one, bondage. <clears throat> and when I say the word, go ahead and repeat it so that you know that you are pronouncing the word correctly. Bondage. She was set free from the bondage of slavery. In your head, as you use context clues to determine the meaning of bondage, you should be picturing yourself as a person or picturing a person who is in slavery, who has been set free. And the bondage of slavery, you could picture in your head a person being chained or being in bonds and then set free, or picturing in your head what happens when somebody is enslaved? They are not allowed to go where they want to go or do what they want to do. And when you're set free, you're set free from those bounds, those bonds that were placed on you as a slave. Number two, citizens. The citizens of our town are proud of the new park that just opened. Citizens. This is a person who is a legal part of a country who has all the rights and privileges of that country. Number three, income. My dad receives an income for the work that he does at an office job, income. So your dad, what does he get for the work that he does, right? His income, that's the money that he makes, good. Number four, lodgings. Can you say that word? Lodgings. This word, first of all, is reminding me of the word lodge that was used in Captive Treasure. Do you remember that? The teepee, the place where Carrie stayed with the keeper was called his lodge. Hmm, lodgings. We provided lodgings and food for the missionaries who visited our church. Lodgings. That would be the place where they stay, where they sleep, where they live. Number five, published. My uncle wrote a story about waterfalls that was published in a magazine last year. Published, right? You should be very familiar with the word published because every time you have gone through the writing process, the last step was the publishing step. And we will be receiving our books, our third grade sound poem books that were published. So it's when somebody writes a piece of work and it is printed in a book or a magazine or a newspaper, it is published. Number six, volume. My mother has three volumes of poetry on her bookshelf. Volumes. You should be picturing a bookshelf and your mom has three volumes of poetry on the bookshelf. So you should be thinking that these are books, books of poetry. Do you remember our bookshelf in the classroom? We had a set of books that belonged together that were different volumes. Volume one, two, three, all the way up into the 20s. What were those books? Encyclopedias, remember those? Well, poetry, some poets, people who write poems, write so many poems, they could not all fit in one book. So they had to write one book, and then they'd write more poems and that would have to go in volume number two and then volume number three and on and on. Okay, good. Great job with the vocabulary words. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this graphic organizer we looked at in, the, in Phyllis Wheatley part one when we were working together. If you have not filled this in yet, we will talk about it more today but this is something that you will need to do. I want you to remember that this piece of paper, this is a graphic organizer. It's a little different than bubble charts and the, the web charts because this graphic organizer 
is designed to help you figure out the main idea of this biography. So the main idea of the biography is not just the name Phyllis Wheatley. In order to find out the main idea of this whole biography, we have to ask those questions. Who is she? What did she do in her life that we want to remember her for? When did she live? And where did she live? Once you find out all this information from the reading, you will be able to have one sentence that tells you the idea, the main idea that this author wants us to know about Phyllis Wheatley. And so you should have already written the who. Who is this young lady in the middle of this graphic organizer? Phyllis Wheatley. Her name should be written there. Maybe you thought of some other things about who she is. Maybe you have written that she was a uh, slave or that she was enslaved and then she was, um, well, we're gonna find out what else happened. When she lived, hmm, there are many dates that you've already read. If you look back at page 241, you can remember the year that she arrived in North America in the British colonies, colonial America, was not the United States yet. And where did she live? Where did she live? Well, in part one, we discussed where she was born. Look back at that if, you're, if you have not figured that out. And then where was she living during the time that you have read already? And so let's see, who was, who was Phyllis Wheatley? A slave girl, and who did she belong to? Now, it's really sad to think that in our history of our country, that people could belong to other people, but that is a part of the history of the United States and very important for us to learn that and to understand our history. And I love to think about how important it is to, to learn the part of history that is not good so that we can know to never repeat that. Where did Phyllis live? Where did she live? Right, she lived in Boston, and this was not a state. Massachusetts was not a state yet. Massachusetts was a colony. So this was during the time of colonial America with the British colonies. Very good, now who taught Phyllis how to read and write? Mary and Mrs. Wheatley. Now remember throughout this, if when I ask a question, you could challenge yourself by pausing and finding the answer and then see if you got it right. Last question before you read today, what did Phyllis love to write? What did she love to write? Poems, very good. Okay, at this time I want you to go ahead and you will read pages 247 through 249, that's three pages, you're gonna read that silently. And while you read, I want you to be thinking in your head while you read, asking yourself, who was Phyllis Wheatley? When did Phyllis Wheatley live? You might know some dates, but what else in history was happening? What important history events? Where did she live? Find out if there's anywhere else that she lived besides Boston. And what did she do? What are the most important things that she did in her life that make her famous and make her be a part of the history, the important history of the United States of America? Okay, go ahead and pause that and come back on for some questions. All right, good job reading. Now we are going to get into page 247. On page 247, I'm gonna ask you some questions. What changes were happening in Boston as Phyllis continued to write? What was happening in Boston? Well, if you said that something about soldiers, okay, if you look behind me in the story on page 247, there were British soldiers. What are the British soldiers wearing in this picture behind me? red, they're in red. Do you remember from history what nickname was given to the British soldiers? 
the red coats. Very good. And so what was happening between the citizens of Boston and the soldiers? They were shouting at each other. Very good. And the people were, the people of the colonies of Massachusetts, in Massachusetts, they were very angry. And there was talk of war. So when Phyllis Wheatley arrived there, it was 1761. We're getting really close to the time of the Revolutionary War, the War for Independence. And we've learned about some of these events in history already, the repealing of the Stamp Act. We've learned about that. Okay, good. So another a question. What? What is the name of the British preacher that Phyllis and Mary listened to? What is his name? George Whitfield. His name is one of the most commonly mispronounced names in history. Look at the spelling of his name. How did you pronounce it in your head? I think you might have said Whitefield, but it's actually pronounced Whitfield. What letter should be left out of White of Whitfield in order for you to know that we should pronounce it Whitfield? Right, the E that's in the middle. If that wasn't there, I know you would have pronounced it Whitfield. So don't ever forget, it is George Whitfield. And he's, he's a very important figure in the history of Christianity. Okay, so what happened to George Whitfield? Very good, he died. Which, was, which is not good, but he died. And where, what did the author say on page 247? Where did George Whitfield go when he died? What does it say there? Heaven, that's what the author said is that he went to heaven. And what, what did George Whitfield's death cause Phyllis to start thinking about? What did it cause her to start thinking about? She started thinking about where would she go when she was to die? If George Whitfield went to heaven when he died, where would Phyllis go when she died? She heard George Whitfield's preaching about the salvation through Jesus Christ, the preaching that we are all sinners and that there's a punishment for our sin that separates us from God and uh, that she knew that he believed that. And believing that Jesus was sent by God the Father to die on the cross to take the punishment for our sins, and that he died and was buried and rose again on the third day, belief and salvation in that is what George Whitfield preached. And so she decided that she would follow George Whitfield's teachings, which meant that she would follow who? Jesus Christ. Okay, look at page 248. What happened to Phyllis Wheatley on August 18, 1771? What happened to Phyllis Wheatley? Right, she was baptized. She was baptized at that time. I'm going to put this back on our graphic organizer. She was baptized on that date. Now, your worksheet for today is a timeline, and this is an example of an, of an exact date and a year that is something you could possibly add to the timeline that's on today's worksheet. Next question for you. Uh, what is the problem that Phyllis Wheatley um, ran into on this page this time in her life? What is the problem in her life? She got sick again. And so what was the first thing that they tried to do to solve this problem? What did they try to do? You see that? They sent her out into the country. And they're not talking about a different country. They're talking about this, the difference between a city. Boston is a city. See how close all the buildings are? There's a lot of people really close to each other. There's a difference between the, the city and the country where there's lots of fresh air there's not as much pollution there's a lot of more trees that are producing oxygen for us to breathe in so a lot of times when people got sick in the cities back then they would have them go out to the country for fresh air in fact it reminds me i grew up in upstate new york and it's more like a country setting. And a lot of kids from the city would come up to upstate new york in the summer to camps and we would call them fresh air kids Fresh air kids. Okay, so on uh, page 248, 
after that, did that work sending her out into the country to get fresh air? No, she was still sick. So then the doctor recommended another solution. Where did the doctor say that she should go? On a sea voyage so that the salt air could maybe help her get better. And so then on page 249, where did she go on her sea voyage? On the sea in a ship, where did she go? She went to London. She went from Boston, Massachusetts in a ship all the way across what ocean? The Atlantic Ocean to London. Now this is a current map. It calls uh, where England is United Kingdom. But back during colonial America, it was Great Britain or England. And it's still, we still call London England today as well, but it's England is part of the United Kingdom or the UK. So anyway, she went all the way to London, England. And so what is the greatest thing that happened to her while she was there? She got well, right? And, but what happened to her there that's kind of exciting? That she got her poems published. And here's an example of her, of a, one of her poem books that was published. This is a very famous picture. In fact, it's the one that's in your reading book. And what's behind me can also be seen in, the, in Washington, DC in the National uh, Portrait Gallery. You can go and you can see her portrait in that studio as well. But look at this page. What would you call this page of a book? It looks like the title page. See the publisher and where it was published in, put my shoulder down, in London, right? Uh, very good. And so she wrote many poems. They would not all fit in one book. So therefore she had many what? Volumes, many volumes of her work. Very good. Okay, at this time I want you to pause the video again and you're gonna read the last two pages of this story. Go ahead and pause and read page 250 and 251. I do want you to continue to think about who is Phyllis Wheatley? What did she do that was so important? Where did she live? When did she live? Go ahead and pause it and come back for some more questions. Okay, good job, very good. So on page 250, I have a question for you that starts with the what question word. What did Phyllis think, think that God planted in every person? Look on page 250, pause it so you can look for the answer. What did Phyllis think that God planted in every person? Right, it says that, um, I believe that God has planted the love of freedom in every person, Phyllis said slowly. Do you believe that? I certainly believe that. God designed us to want to be free. And she wasn't just talking about being free from slavery that she was in, in the, in the colonies. She was also talking about the slavery of being in bondage to sin. So the Bible tells us and uses the picture of being bonded, being in bondage as a slave to what it's like to be a sinner before you are saved through Jesus Christ. It's like you're a sinner and you're in bondage to sin. You are in bondage and you're going to face the punishment one day of being forever separated from God and in eternity going to hell. But once you put your trust in Jesus, you ask him to forgive you of your sins. You know that you're a sinner and that you need to be saved from your sins and asking for forgiveness. And you believe that Jesus paid the price for your sins on the cross that he was buried and raised again on the third day with newness of life, then you are freed of sin, freed of that punishment of sin and the bondage that is put on you as a sinner. Uh, who, and then let's go back to the fact that Phyllis Wheatley was enslaved as a person on this earth owned by another person, could not go where she wanted to go. Even though these people who bought her on that slave block when she was six or seven years old, even though they were very kind to her and very good to her, she was still in a, in a situation that is not good. Slave and master, somebody owning you. Uh, who gave Phyllis her freedom from slavery? 
Who? All right, Mr. Wheatley. Mr. Wheatley gave her her freedom. And you know, him and his wife, they did come to love, love Phyllis Wheatley. Uh, but he also, I think he loved her so much, he wanted her to have her freedom. Look on page 251. Where would Phyllis live after she got her freedom? Where would she live after she would leave the Wheatleys? Because she was no longer their slave. She was free to go and live her life on her own. Where would she go? Page 251. Well, it said that she would go and have her own lodgings, her own place to live. Very good. And what? What would be her chief source of income? Income meaning money. You had to pay for a place to live and pay for your food. So how would she do that? Her poems, her books. People bought her books, loved her poems. They read her poems and she got money from that. One day if you write a book or articles in magazines or blogs online, you could get money from your work that is published. <clears throat> so there now, down there on the bottom, I want you to think about the fact that Phyllis, she, she, was, she really was loved by the Wheatley family and they took care of her. Remember when she was a little girl and she was a slave girl being sold? She was very sick. Nobody else wanted to buy her. In fact, she would have died if Mrs. Wheatley hadn't bought her. And so they took care of her. They taught her how to read and write and uh, to the point where she could write poems. And so they treated her kindly. And how did she return the love and care that they gave to her? What did she do? that shows that she did love them. Right, she took care of Mrs. Wheatley until Mrs. Wheatley died. Mrs. Wheatley was very sick and she stayed at their house and took care of them. Even though she was free, she stayed there and took care of her until she died. Okay, I want you to look at your graphic organizer now. So when did she live? When did she live? 1753 is what you could figure out for her birth. If you did the math from the time that she was sold, it said 17, 7, 1761 and that she was seven years old. If you do that math, it would give you 1754. But I want to show you this monument. If you go to Boston, you can see this monument in honor of Phyllis Wheatley. And on there it says 1753 with the C in front of it. Do you remember what C stands for in front of the, somebody's birth? Circa or about. We don't know the exact year because she was born where? In Africa. And since she was, you know, stolen or kidnapped and sold as a slave, there's no birth certificate saying exactly when she was born. So Circa 1753. And when did she die? What did you find out on page 251 to write on your graphic organizer? 1784. And there's another date for you that you may very well use on your timeline, uh, which is your worksheet to do for today. All right, so what are the most important things that she did in her life? What would you say? What did you read today? What was the most important things that Phyllis Wheatley did? I hope you thought, since we're at a Christian school, I hope you thought that it was very important that she became a Christian. She became a Christian. And so, and outside of um, spirituality in the Bible, what is the other great thing that she is famous for? Writing poems or being a poet, okay? So I hope that now you can stop and think about who Phyllis Wheatley is and what did this biography teach you as the main idea of her life? who she is, where she lived, when she lived, and what she did. You know how I would sum it up? I would say, Phyllis Wheatley was a Christian poet who lived in Boston during the 1700s. That's what I would say. Now, 
uh, where, when she lived, you could add some other things from history there. It was colonial America when the colonies were there instead of states. They weren't states yet. So, all right, that is it for this lesson. Good job reading through Phyllis Wheatley, Slave Girl of Old Boston. I thank you for your time and uh, please fill out the rest of this worksheet and your timeline. You can look back through this story and find dates and years to use to fill in that timeline. All right, bye-bye. I love you and I miss you and I'm so proud of how hard you have been working. Good job.